The five empty world signs filled my screen and I clicked to start the journey. It gave me no options or game modes to play, so I guess we're on baby mode. Well, baby mode, but on hard difficulty. I can't finish a joke or I'll get in trouble. I spawned on the beach and thought I was deaf. For some reason in this version of Minecraft, there's no sound. But there are sheep you could punch to get wool from, also some teleporting pigs from space that seemed too powerful to be kept alive. So I took the initiative and played patty cake with them all till they couldn't anymore. It was time to get serious and get some tools. I stole logs from this tree and then was confused. The leaves started to disappear, which is normal in the later versions of Minecraft, but that doesn't come till beta, I believe. I crafted some tools and hunted down pigs again. There's not much I can do but prepare for later versions when certain game mechanics and new blocks are added. I began looking for a nice spot to build a base when I was distracted with the default skin and walking animation. A true beauty. <laughs> It's so bad. It, oh, I love it. I love the arms swinging everywhere. You can't even see what item I'm holding in my hand. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, that's bad. That's really bad. I need to make it into this hill over here and I'm just going to barricade myself in. Now, I'm not scared of the night. I'm scared of the alpha night, where it becomes insanely dark to where you can't see and the deadliest mobs spawn in that'll make fighting 10 withers without a weapon seem easy. Before we continue on with the story, I feel like I should explain what's going on. Minecraft was created in 2009 and it has come a long, long way. Dozens of updates and the versions we all enjoy and play on now is nothing like the beginning, obviously. So starting in alpha, I want to survive through every single major update of Minecraft. I'll begin in the beginning and end of alpha, same with base. Data, and then every five days, I'll go to the next major version, like 1.1, then 1.2, then 1.3, and so on, until I reach day 100 on version 1.18. However, I'll go to the latest update of each version, just for bug fixes and for the full update of each version. I'm sorry that I'm terrible at explaining, it'll make sense as time goes on. Anyways, I wanted to collect more food before continuing on. After getting more food that doesn't stack, I collected 64 blocks of the most advanced item in this version, sand, that can be smelted into glass. I didn't want to stand in the cave until daytime again, so I began to scout out a home spot and came upon this nice little open area. There's not really that many nice areas this early on and I don't want to travel much, or else I'll have to go incredibly far for the new chunk areas and items as the updates come in. I first started this house as nice as I could, but quickly ran out of blocks. The ugly cobblestone was going to be a nice roof until I ran out of cobblestone and how to use dirt to finish it off. An ugly house, but it's my ugly house. Sheesh! My, oh my, what a beautiful base. <laughs> but the greatest alpha house done, I needed to get more cobblestone for a furnace. I also really need coal soon. Oh yeah, when furnaces had stone top uh, covers instead of like an actual furnace look. <laughs> I began smelting all of the sand and used all my coal because I kind of didn't notice I was almost out of torches. But we're getting glass and making this place look fancy. Even though I can't see out and before you leave a comment, no, I can't craft a bed yet. It's not in the game. But you can still leave the comment if you want. I can't stop you. Now we're getting to the amazing updates in Minecraft, which is almost as amazing as today's sponsor, Genshin Impact. A vast open world action RPG with a wide variety of weapons and artifacts across dozens of playable characters you can obtain. It's available for free on PC, Android, iOS, and PlayStation 4 and 5. I know you all love open world games just as much as me, and what if I told you this world would take you months to explore and conquer? There's secrets and fun puzzles to uncover, areas to swim, mountains to climb, cliffs to glide off of, diverse cultures to fall in love with, and bosses to watch your friends try and beat for you. That's right, on top of the hundreds of hours of gameplay, you could play in four player co-op with three of your friends and do everything I just said together. And on top of all of that, Genshin Impact releases new events every six weeks y'all always have content to play, which they just released version 2.6 Zephyr of the Violet Garden. It releases a brand new massive area to explore, more story missions, a new artifact domain, and the special event releases four new festival games. There's a tower defense game, new combat mechanic tests, photo shoot for new poetry, and a decoration event for your own house. Be fast as the festival games are only here for a limited amount of time, along with the returning character who is an absolute powerhouse that you won't want to miss, Kamisato Ayaka. She's a five-star cryo character, which are the highest class ratings, who uses a sword. She'll add the perfect balance of tranquility and speed for your team, and help carry you through any electric enemies that stand in your way. Better act fast however, you can only try and obtain her from April 19th to May 10th. Thank you Genshin Impact for sponsoring my video and you can support my channel by downloading the game below with my link. Day 3 and we're on beta 1.0 now, which adds in leave decay, chicken eggs can be thrown, and if I'm too far from a chest or it blows up, I can't access them. I know.
know, a lot of huge changes. I spent the morning cooking all of my food, making a chest, and finishing the glass part of the walls to see this creeper being really creepy and watching me. Freak. Now you see, I could replace the roof and everything, but I feel like there's so much character that I think I'm gonna leave this as my shack. So much natural beauty in it. Like, oh, it's just, it's so perfect. With the house loving and admiration all done, I began mining trying to find some coal. But instead, I found this huge quantity of iron. One. Just one block of iron right here. And there's not much else to do yet. I tried to find iron and coal to get stronger and prepare for diamonds and the nether. The early versions of Minecraft was a horror story too. These caves were beyond creepy, with noises going off every few minutes. And the fact I couldn't really find any enemy mobs made it even spookier. Where were they and when would they come out? Who knows? It just put me on edge and for once I couldn't find coal. But I did find some iron that led to cobblestone, which had to be a dungeon. Since I'm out of torches, I began to remove the surface area where the dungeon Dungeon is, just to let sunlight in and so mobs wouldn't spawn during the day. With the corner cleared, I broke the ceiling and saw that it's a skeleton spawner. Not too shabby, and I can make an early experience farm. Once I get to the update, that'll let me do that. I begin clearing more of the land, but it's taking too long without a shovel. So I returned home to make one, but night fell, and I figured it wouldn't be safe to continue mining without the sun. The end of beta 1.8.1 added just about everything to the game. The core mechanics, so much that I couldn't write down everything in this book. I was amazed to see that the furnace top was changed to the regular furnace we can finally spread in the game but it doesn't look correct and it's time to get back to business i got back to removing the roof of the dungeon Ooh. 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 so the skeletons didn't like me taking their roof for some reason i couldn't tell if it was the fact they would light on fire now or that they can't spawn in anymore before enchantments were added to the game the tools were actually really quick i know this is nothing like a netherite efficiency 5 shovel but this is a stone shovel moving really fast i finished removing the roof and got to checking out the chest the first one had a saddle and the second chest had two iron buckets honestly not bad finds at all for early on to the side of the dungeon a tiny burrow opened up and i finally mined some coal. Returning to the beautiful shack, I found out crits were added to the game. Remembered experience was added and kind of got sidetracked. Like, really far. But I also needed the food. I crafted a bed finally once I got back home and everything's coming together. I wanted to see if I could MLG water bucket in this version before sleeping and, well, no. The first time didn't work, so I tried a second time and still no. I think the water source needs to be updated before MLG water bucketing works. Now the real movie begins. Version 1.0. For the next five days, I'll be on this version and and sadly, it didn't really release too much. It added hardcore, but I can't change my world to it. So we have to continue in regular, sadly. And I'm going to wait on going to the end till it updates more. So I got back to work on the skeleton spawner area. I wanted to make it look nicer and open it up a bit more. But I was enjoying it so much, so I went around and covered all of the holes on my land and covered up some caves. With the land all pretty and safe, I wanted to get to exploring. But not too far as I didn't want to load in too many new chunks. I'm mainly looking for some coal since it's so rare and I can't mine yet without it. And I did find a decent amount in little burrows, but then I saw this nice mountain in the distance. The first large mountain I've seen in this world. I went over to see what I could find, and the place was really misleading. It was a tiny island with nothing on it, really, and no ores. But I was enjoying this spot on the hill. Could make for a nice base, but I like my shack a lot, so I don't know if I want to leave it. Night was here though, so I began to head home. A lot of strange mobs kept asking me for some Disneyland tickets, but I told them they don't deserve the happiness for always wanting to hurt me. And then I made back home you want to go oh yep yep you just shook your head yes okay okay dude i got you okay wait but get away from my door <laughs> let me get out <laughs> no and then it went south or north. I don't really know directions here. I messed up getting outside the shack and then the sprinting didn't work here because you have to press W twice to sprint instead of control. Luckily, the booger only blew up the front of my entrance. Not the chest or other important blocks. So I remade everything and now my doors are weird. The opening and closing with double doors is just weird and pressure plates make it weirder. I made some more stone picks and got ready to go mining. We need to get a lot more resources and I want to find a cave soon. Oh, well, that was fast. The bad part is that it drops off and I can't see the ground. Surely it's safe. Never mind, I need to get out. I don't have any armor and swimming in this version is insanely slow and bad. It looks like only two creepers and one skeleton. Okay, my bad, two skeletons. You know what? Let's be brave. I'm gonna put the water down and then I'll jump down there and then we're gonna get to war. Oh my God, it's swimming up. No, 
No, do not swim up. Oh, wait, wait, they can swim up. Oh, come up here, boys. Hey, yeah, all of you come up here. Yeah. Okay, wait, wait, get closer. That's not fair. That's not fair. I can't hit. I can't reach you. That's not fair. And the skeletons kept on cheating and got me down to three hearts, and my hunger wouldn't go down for some reason. I couldn't heal. The mobs wouldn't let me come in. Sounds like high school all over again, so I left. I don't need their stupid cave or their stupid ores. I'll go find my own caves and ores, and it'll be cooler and better and in larger quantities. And look at that. I found this glitch water spot that led into a cave. I lit it up with all the torches I had and got to work on mining ores. Which wasn't much, but I got 32 coal and 11 iron ores. Finally making some progress and headed back home. I smelted the iron and made this iron chest plate and later on some iron pants. Super drippy now. And with iron armor on, I think I can enter this cave system and get rid of the bullies. I was going to do the same water bucket tactic as before, but you don't get the title of the world's greatest Minecraft PvP legendary player and use this tactic. So I got my sword ready and jumped in. Only a creeper in front of me and he reenacted a fire one. I rushed around the cave system lighting it up and saying hi to any mobs I came across, which wasn't much, like four total, but with them gone and the immediate area lit up, I got to mining. Hi. The welcoming party came and said hi, and this place is massive. Just like my appreciation for you if you'd subscribe to my channel. I'm close to 1 million subscribers, and it'd mean a lot to me if you'd subscribe. And lastly, 30,000 likes, and I'll release another 100 days movie. So the more I explored the cave, the more it opened, and this place wasn't gonna end soon. Night was here, and I decided to head back. I made the staircase leading up, said goodbye to the friendly zombie, and this was a really nice haul. Finally getting some ores and coal. I woke up to a beautiful view of a skeleton burning. Probably belonged to the skeleton gang from the cave entrance. I was thinking of exploring today to get out of the cave, but then I remembered the sun is terrible, bright and hot. So I scurried back down to the caves and I resumed my normal life. I went back down to the deepest points and kept looking around. The ores are good, but I really want to find some diamonds. Oh. Oh. I'm around. Why are you looking at me like that, you freak? I'm so happy their AI is incredibly stupid. <gasps> That's early on! Oh my god. Oh god, okay, I'm sorry, I take it back. Apparently they're not stupid. So yeah, creepers are not stupid at all. I'm so sorry. I found the zombie spawner with no chest. Lame. And at this point, I just want diamonds. But I can't find them for some reason. Oh hey, diamonds. Just two diamonds. I guess it's better than nothing. It was getting late, so I headed back up to the house and the loot we got? Really good for one day of mining. I wanted to sleep next, but the mobs outside wouldn't leave me alone. They really want to cuddle, man. I can never cheat on my girlfriend. I woke up and chose violence. Mainly on creepers since why not start stockpiling for rockets for the elytra in the future. Also because I still haven't forgiven them for the cave incident. I crafted my axe next and went out to till the land. I remember this is how you get seeds in the past, but I guess we updated too far for it to work. I didn't see any grass anywhere, and just for fun, I tried out leaves from a tree. I don't know, maybe it would drop seeds, but no, I need grass, and I don't see any near me, since these chunks are old. Just like these trees, and I'm in need of logs. Since I do have some wheat from the dungeon chest, I got to work on creating an animal pen. I'm struggling for food and I need to stop killing the animals around me and get to work on breeding them. I finished the pen and got two pigs nearby to go in and then had to travel far for a cow and a weird cow that looks sick, strange creatures. But the animal farm is coming along nicely. In the morning, I headed over to the pig's pen and ate their uncle right in front of them to assert dominance. Then I got to work on the farm even though I still don't have seeds. I decided to be fancy and enclose it with a fence since I really don't want baddies to spawn here and walk over everything, especially since seeds will be very valuable to me. With that all done, I still need a second cow. I went a few dozen blocks from the beauty shack and found this sea cow. Now the farm is complete. I could go for sheep, but I don't really care for them. Don't need the wool. I began to breed the animals, but this pig was trying to run for dear life. It really didn't want to go into parenthood. I headed out again. I need to get into some new chunks, which came at an abrupt start. Just a clean cut off from this hill into the ocean. And to the right, I saw grass. <laughs> I'm saved. I can get seeds luckily and start the farm. It didn't drop any. And those were the only grass blocks on this continent, but I do see some islands off in the distance. However, the sun was going down and I headed back home. Now I'm on to version 1.1, and still not too much was added, but I can get apples from leaves now, which is actually kind of huge for me since food is a problem right now. I crafted a boat to get to the island faster, and on my way there, I said hi to Technoblade. I jumped into the ocean afterwards and was reminded how awful boats were back in the day. They're slow, turn slow, can't pick them back up, oh, right, and if you hit literally anything, they break 
kind of wooden planks and sticks for whatever reason. But the islands luckily do have grass and I got my first seed, but I'm not leaving with just one seed. These bad boys have been a pain to find, so I'm going to go over every single island here and collect as much as I can, which was 24 at the end of the day. I crafted a new boat from one of the trees and as I was heading home, the ocean was raised at this chunk area. I never knew this, but Mojang lowered the ocean levels by one in the full release of Minecraft. Anyways, I made it back home at night with only one and a half hunger remaining. And things are looking dire. I only have two uncooked pork chops and this bread. I cooked those pork chops to hold me over, but I was getting desperate. I went over and planted the seeds since they would take time and then remembered I have seven bones and those can turn into bone meal. And to make it even better, in this version, bone meal will fully grow anything with one click. I'm saved. I decided to be kind and breed the animals since I do need a lot more and then made the rest into bread. With the hunger issue slightly saved, I went out exploring again to find some animals. But this pig didn't want to go out without a fight, which is fine. I don't like that boat anyways. I made another though and traveled over to that tiny island from before to see if I could find animals on here. But no, nothing was here. So I figured land would show up. So I got back into another boat and traveled out. And apparently I'm surviving 100 days in the ocean now. Just ghost island after ghost island. I don't know if this is a sign, but it's quite ominous. I cut my journey short and began to head home. Still seeing nothing. So I guess I'm riding on this little animal farm that I made. In the morning, I watched my future bone meal burn in the sunlight. I turn it into bone meal and tend to the farm, blah, blah, blah. I can't stay here. I know the shack is beautiful and it's where I started, but I don't like how animals don't spawn around here. The ore spawn rate is terrible. Land is messed up. You get it. So instead, I'm just going to prepare to move by mining and getting more ores, mainly since I still haven't explored this entire cave yet, just like the zombie dungeon with one chest. Once the spawner and zombies were dealt with, the chest gave me two bread and honestly, I'll happily take it. And I finally started to run into diamonds. It hurt. They're very hard. You see, I remember this from the early days. If you mine near lava, you'll find diamonds. For whatever reason, they spawn here the most. And I got a fairly decent amount. However, night was falling and it was getting late, so I returned back to my den. I got organized from the trip yesterday and tended to my animals. And while doing so, I began to think, which is how you know this is going to be good. I can make a diamond pick. No point in waiting and saving them. And I could get some obsidian right now, instead of having to find some more later on. I want to collect enough for a portal and enchant table and a little bit left over just to be safe. I went to a spot with water Wada, one of my New Jerseyan, New Jersey. I went to a spot with lava and water landing on top of it to make mining easier and got to work. That took around five minutes to mine. Never been so bored in my life. And while I'm down here, might as well get some more ores before the day ends. And the use of this case system is coming to an end. I've almost collected everything I need or want from this place. So I was going to say hi to the animals today since I won't be bringing them with me, but I'd feel too bad and some of them were still young. So I decided to leave them here. With only peace and quiet now, I need to get ready for the move. Firstly, I need to chop down the trees around here and fill up on logs. Ooh, an apple. I could try and make some golden apples soon. The recipe in this version is a lot easier and I can craft god apples. But before that, we got more chores. Secondly, I need to collect these fences. They were expensive. Now to explain why I specifically waited for day 16 to move. The jungle is added. New blocks and villages. Well, villages have been in here, but now I really want to go find one. Also because iron golems and it feels nicer to move once a new update rolls in. Here's all the items, by the way, that I'm deciding to take with me. And now onto version 1.2.5. The fun jungle update and our new journey to better lands. So I was going to leave right away, but something's wrong with the doors. Uh, the update somehow managed to push the door forward, but it opened the same way. I don't know, it was cursed. But the pressure plates are finally not cursed, so that's a good sign for the future house. Anyways, it's time to go. I just headed north. Again, I'm guessing, I don't know directions. And no, I'm not leaving this area because I'm lazy or because I have to work so hard just to find coal. I just don't feel like doing it anymore. There's a big difference. So I made it past the ocean's edge and into a minefield. I would have gone faster, but the lily pads on this version are made out of titanium. I did, however, find a jungle about two minutes later and said hi to the pigs here. I'm still scarred from the lack of food and then got to exploring. I'll be honest, I'm not really feeling the jungle, mainly because this is a video game and I'm not in here in person. But also, I don't feel like any place in here would make a nice home. I feel like there's still a lot more to explore. I want a regular plains biome for my new home. But the sun was setting fast and I slept on this three block island. While I swim over to this place faster than my 
Michael Phelps could ever dream of. I know this is a plains biome, but I got distracted and forgot that I wanted to live in a plains biome because there were pigs everywhere. And I got hungry and they had food, kind of. Firstly, I'm hunting down pigs and cows along my journey so I get 64 steaks and pork chops to eliminate future hunger issues. Secondly, I'll explain this more in the future movies, but I'm now doing a challenge for you all. I've been asked hundreds, if not thousands of times to release the world download to my hardcore world. And I'm building insane things over there that you'll all want access to even more now. And I got a Twitter, so I'm down to make a deal. If you all can get me to 100,000 Twitter followers before 2022 is over, I'll release my hardcore world download for you all to have and play on. So you can all experience the wonders of the autoinator that I built. Back to the movie. This frozen wasteland biome is going to be a huge thing for this world. It never ends. So I wanted to break away from this frozen wasteland, so I decided to change directions and head north. I crafted a boat and traveled across the ocean again, and after a few hundred blocks, I came upon another frozen wasteland. Woo! I still needed to get more pork chops, so my wing tickled some pigs. A uh, goochie goochie goo! And after traveling, I'm not joking, over a thousand blocks on this frozen wasteland, I finally found a jungle! Luckily, this seed isn't all frozen, until I went to the edge of the jungle and saw another frozen wasteland on the other side of it. I cannonballed into the only water spot that isn't ice for 170 17 miles, and then I went into the super rare frozen wasteland. And then the unthinkable happened. I only ever heard of these things in folklores, but I found a desert. And if you're thinking of what I'm thinking, that's correct. The biome I found next is a regular plains field. I know, I know, threw the curveball right at you. The thing that caught my eye was in the distance. I barely saw this village, the structure I've been looking for so I can build my base here. I checked out the village and the worst mobs were just relaxing, but there's only four buildings. Given, not a bad sign, I only need two villagers. And then I went to that open field right next to it to build my house. I didn't want to go too far and I began to fly out the area which took all day. I think we're getting to the times of slow tools now so enchanting will have to come soon. Maybe. Probably not. I'm too stubborn to do all of that. I got the water bucket out and did the CIA waterboarding tactic to the grass blocks where I want to build my home. I wanted to get information out of them on where seeds are and once they were all gone, I was stunned. I actually got seeds. I didn't need to travel 1000 blocks for it. So what I'm thinking is every single time that the game updates and adds in new blocks, I add it to the house. I, I just do like a different room or something. So I place the outline of the house and I'm coming to a realization. Ever since I made the 100 Days in Africa movie, I'm building all of my bases into circles and I don't know why. It's just kind of easy. So the first room I'm building now is just the hub area, the main room. But I'm using all the blocks I can make right now to make it fancy and not too square and with depth. I ran out of cobblestone, however, and there's this little cave thingy right next to my house. So I made it into a mine. which took me all day and I'm kind of shocked I didn't find a cave system right away. However, I now have enough cobblestone to finish the walls, sort of. But first, we update. 1.3.2 and this bad boy adds kind of some new stuff. Trading in stairs, but I won't be trading with villagers for quite some time once they get their good update. And the green wiener came by today and checked out my stuff. I think he's a part of the HOA and he's making sure everything is up to code on my building, which looked like everything was until he got to my mine shaft and then his coworker came out and apparently they were not happy. Something about no structural beams or fencing around the entrance to prevent anyone from falling in. I complied and added fencing to make it safer and then took a look at my base and decided why not use glass to finish off the walls, make it nice and open. So I visited the villagers again and decided to borrow some sand. They have a ton and I'm sure they won't mind sharing, but contrary to popular belief, sand takes a while to smelt. So I went back to mining and began to hear zombies in the walls. Something a crazy person would say, but I actually heard them. On until I dug down deeper and didn't hear them anymore. I know I'll find them soon. Some of the glass is done smelting and I began adding it to the walls. The texture for early glass is hideous, but I think it was the right decision to add it to the walls. Just makes it look a lot nicer. Also found out that I could place logs sideways now. And no, I won't go back and change the orientation of the window logs. I won't be updating the building as time goes on. I found out the hard way that the more times you use an item, the less you have. So I copied the corporations and borrowed some of the forest to finish the floor's border. Afterwards, I finished off the glass walls and this place is coming along nicely, but it's missing something. Leaves. The one decoration block that always makes a build look better. I added it to the wall outside and thought it looked really nice, so why not add it to the roof as well? But I'm not sure if I like it. It just feels too flat and I don't like how you can see through the wall now. Oh, phew. 
first try. And yeah, I didn't like the look, so I removed those leaves. Got back to the forest to teach it another lesson, also because I need more logs for the top part of the walls, and then decided on adding leaves to the corner parts of where the logs pop out. So now it has nice depth and you can't see through it. A big brain move for a big beauty look. I loved how it was going, so I finished the top part of the wall with that design, and now for the flooring. I was thinking of making it all out of planks, but I want to add some design to it and work with depth. So I'm making an outer circle that'll be wooden planks. The inside cobblestone slabs. I began adding the wooden planks and it was all going well, until it didn't. I ran out but finished the outside of the circle. I removed the grass blocks next and luckily, I have a massive surplus of cobblestone so this was easy. I'm making the inside slabs for a few reasons. First for depth and color, second so I don't have to light up the center and so mobs can't spawn in here. And third, to get rid of some of my cobblestone. And I'm quite happy with how the inside is looking. It's looking really clean and nice. I had some slabs left over so I touched up the outside since once I start building, I I don't know when to stop and stop adding more on. It's a nice issue sometimes. With the walls all done and the home secured-ish, I brought in everything and tried to be organized, but I'll be adding more chests later on. And here's our beautiful almost done homes hub. I was going to go mining for that cave this morning, but remembered about sugar canes. I ran around the immediate areas to collect all the sugar cane I could find. You see, this early on, the book recipe doesn't require leather. Or it might, I forgot. But I also need paper for those rockets for the elytra. So regardless, I will be needing a ton of paper. I made a little infinite water pond on my front lawn and then finish up the sugar cane. I'll have to wait for it to grow to begin growing the rest. With that all done and some daylight left, I went to the mine shaft and got to work. But sadly again, I didn't come across any cave, but I did get a lot of resources. Update 1.4.7 is the pretty scary update. The first update with an actual title to it. It adds withers, witches, and the scariest of them all, anvils. Defeating the wither is now on my to-do list. Also, Minecraft finally added full screen, so the hotbar is going to be super tiny now. Uh, sorry. So we're now actually getting to the part of the game where it's actually good to go to the nether, to go to the end, and actually, like, you know, play the game. So what I want to do is find a cave system. I want to get some more diamonds. Hopefully I can upgrade my system. System? Hopefully I can upgrade all of my equipment and then I'm going to go to them. The only hard part is finding a cave. Oh hey, a cave. It took me maybe two minutes to explore the entire place. It's a very tiny cave shaft and basically just had gold and iron. Nothing else. But the disappointment out of the way, I got back to mining out the staircase and three fours later, I came upon another cave. And this one was looking bigger and more promising. I water bucketed down and got to lighting up the place. I went down to the lava lake and began to cross it. I usually have luck finding diamonds this way and I could smell them. They're close. And there they are. Diamonds. Just a little walk past them and there was an opened up skeleton dungeon with no chest. Kind of lame. I collected the ores on the way out though and just covered up the cave. It was another tiny one but at least I was able to get some diamonds. So I wouldn't call this place disappointing. But it sure was disappointing for this creeper that I was taunting through my window. Even made it believe that I was welcoming it into my home. The first half of the day I was tending to the sugarcane farm and fixing it up a bit. The entire farm is almost fully planted. Once the chores were done, I got back to mining. I went all the way down to Y level 11 and began to make a tunnel. Surely I would find diamonds, right? Nope. The entire time I was making this tunnel, I never found anything. Ores were actually rare. So I don't know if I'm at the wrong level or if everything is actually supposed to be this rare. But I'm getting bored of mining. I made some more chests in the morning and got to organizing. I gathered up all of the obsidian needed for a portal and got to work. Since I don't need to be careful about dying, I just went to the portal. I wouldn't mind getting diamond armor, but clearly that won't be happening for a bit. I waited for the chunks to load in and saw this low hanging glowstone cluster and collected it. It should be a nice block to build with for the enchanting room or something. I went back to the portal and began to head north. A gas came in and well, I guess bows worked differently earlier on. The arrow took a 90 degree turn and went somewhere else, but still hit the gas. I was traveling for a while, not sure what I was looking for, but then after a few minutes, I saw in the distance another fortress. Bingo. Sadly though, since I found it so early on, there won't be any chest in here. Or enemies, I guess. I never saw any wither skeletons or blazes until I finally made it to the top open area and then I saw the blazes. I saw quite a few wither skeletons along the way, so I thought, why not try and get a skull? I made the usual two blocks all blockage and apparently withers can walk under that in this version. Caught me completely off guard, but at least there was only one and not five altogether. I made it to the blaze spawner and for the next six minutes, I just farmed, getting 
including 11 blaze rods should be all I need. I was waiting to heal up while looking at the hot singles in my area. I guess those ads are correct, but I'm not in the market. Apparently, the singles didn't take it well as I was trying to get out and back to my portal, which took me over four minutes of getting lost in this fortress and trying to find my way back to the entrance, which of course I found because I'm the greatest memory explorer in the entire Minecraft universe, maybe. I made it back to the portal and just went back home. With some daylight still left, I got organized, did the chores, and went over to the village buildings and borrowed some of their bookshelves. Heard they had some good reads and I want some more stuff to read. But then the worst thing happened. I wanted to see if papers made books still. And no, the recipe changed and I need leather now for books. I missed the window just barely. I still really want to get more diamonds for diamond armor so I could find the ender dragon with a lot more ease. It's not needed, but the cushion would be nice. I went down to the mineshaft again to try my luck some more. But as time went on, I kept going further and further in no luck. I remember diamonds being rare, but not this rare. I think at this point, my best chance for getting diamond armor is either another fortress on the newer updates, the end cities, or trading with villagers. But all of those options are far into the future. Update 1.5.2 is a redstone update. This will shock you, it added new redstone items and functions, quartz and nether bricks. The only part of the update that I'm interested in right now is the quartz. I want to use some of those blocks for the enchanting room. I headed north in the nether and tried to find some quartz, but no matter how far I was going, I could never come across any. So, seven minutes of traveling later, I finally came upon some quartz. We're in the new chunk areas. I farmed for so long that I went from level 30 all the way to level 40. I had a nice amount of quartz and felt like this is all I would need for the building. So now, time to head back home, and I was heading the right direction, but I got confused at one part and, well, I didn't find my portal. But I was finding some familiar areas, and I remember my portal being near this location. And voila, I found my portal. Once I went back to the overworld, it seems like the world was crying because I missed sleeping for one day. A truly tragic sign. With the quartz ready, I got organized and began to collect some logs. I need to make the staircase, second floor, and then the enchanting room that I've been working towards for the past two days. Once the material was ready, I want to try and make some new kind of staircase I haven't tried yet. A three-way staircase, since I don't really know how to make a nice four-way staircase this small. And after a little bit of messing around with designs, I think I came up with a nice look. It faces all the main doorways I use. I built the staircase all fancy up to the second floor part and a nice little touch of wooden slab so I don't smack my forehead on the ceiling when going up. I filled in the floor with wooden planks, but I wasn't really sure if I liked the wooden slabs. It looked too plain, but I didn't forget to add fences around the open area. I don't want the HOA creepers to come by again. I changed my mind on the wooden slabs and changed it for cobblestone slabs. And instead of using ugly torches for lights, why not use the glowstone blocks? It fit in really nicely, added some color, and although I still think that glowstone should emit more light than torches, but that's just me. I got all the blocks I want to use for the enchanting room, and then I remembered about these two flowers. I only kept them because I actually collected these two back in alpha, and I wanted to place them in my house once I built one. Just a nice little trophy from the past. I was about to begin building the enchanting room, but the edge of the second floor caught my attention. I really don't like how it looks endless and there's no border for it, so I went around collecting logs for it and then got to work on removing the wooden planks and putting in the logs. This took the majority of today, but I think it was worth it. It gives a nice definition to the edges and makes it look a little bit nicer with the color difference. Now I'm ready for the enchanting room, and I think I'm going to build a pathway on this section. And you see, I was going to finish building the staircase, but why not use more nether themed stuff for this? So I went to the nether and collected some netherrack. I can smelt this down into nether bricks and then use those for the stairs. It's more work, but I think it'll look nicer for the section. I also don't really mind if rooms don't match. I want them all to have their own themes, plus the quartz adds a nice contrast to the stairs I think. Now this entire time I've been building and doing all this stuff in my house, I've been hearing zombies non-stop moaning in my ears and it's driving me insane. I don't know where the cave is, but I dug down. Oh hey, the cave. I said hi to the secret locals and finally, I have only quiet, no more zombie noises. I lit up the cave to prevent any more from spawning in. I also use this time down here to let the nether rack smelt some more. By the end of the day, I finished the staircase for the enchanting room. Now we're getting to to the fun updates. 1.6.4 brings in leads, name tags, horses, skeleton horses, and more. It's actually been over a year, closer to two, since I've used horses. Never really found a good reason for them. Sure, you can travel faster with them, but I usually get an elytra before one is needed, so I felt like why not try and get a horse and use it? Could be fun. Also, could find the stronghold faster. The issue is that I can't find a horse. I ran a little bit over 600 blocks from my base, spawned in a lot of new chunks, but that didn't matter. I guess the horse 
horses heard me talking trash and decided they didn't want me to find them. But it wasn't entirely a waste. When I went back home, I saw this wolf in the distance and tamed it with the last bone in my inventory. The HOA creepers came by again today, man. They were saying something about how I can't build a floating enchanting room, something about it being structurally unsafe and how it needs to be held up by something. And I have an idea for that, but I need more nether bricks first. So while these cook, this isn't going to be the final animal pen. I just want to get them gathered first. I think I'll build the enchanting room first and then I'll build a barn underneath it, supporting it up. And I got everything ready. This little farm as well to get some wheat to lure animals in. And it worked for the cow, obviously, but not the pig. The pigs have ascended and now require carrots, which I don't have. With all the bricks finished, it was time to get to work on the room. I know I make a lot of circles for some reason, but I'm trying to not make this room a circle. It's more of a square with round edges, a huge difference but I'll be needing a lot more nether bricks for this room. Also, maybe some more quartz too. I underestimated how many blocks this place would take, but instead of just mining more netherrack, I thought, why not just go to the nether fortress and steal some of their blocks? It'll take a little bit to get there, but it's so much faster than my current way. The gas came out and wanted to play catch, but it wasn't grasping the concept on catch. It just kept dodging, so we'll have to work on that with them. After running for a little bit, I made it to the fortress and began stealing their entrance. So that was a super long speed montage. I kind of got carried away and I'm uncertain if it's too long. If you could tell me in the comments section if it was good or not, that helped me out a ton. The gas baseball team came by for some more practice, but I had no time for them. I'm a penguin on a mission. And speaking of mission, I should prepare to go to the end, which I was with this enderman, except he was scared of me. Every time I looked at him to get him to run at me, he just ran away. It's like I was scaring him. How the turntables have flipped. After trying to say hi to the enderman for like a minute, I went back to the enchanting room and finish building it. It was supposed to be more of a square, but I for some reason made it into an egg? I don't know either. With 41 levels, I went and made the enchanting table and then added some bookshelves to the room. I forgot how many I needed, but I can only enchant a level 22. So I went around and tickled some cows to get more leather and then finished adding all the bookshelves to the room. Since I don't need lapis yet to enchant, I took advantage of the moment and made a new diamond pick. Enchanting it for some god tier stuff. Efficiency 4. Yay. Surely the almost broken pick would be better. Efficiency 1. Okay. If I make all diamond tools, of course it gets something better. Efficiency 1. Apparently, efficiency is the only enchantment in this version. I need to get more experience to enchant my stuff, and I have the greatest experience farm right here. It's just, they can hurt me. So that's bad. I made this little hut to cheese through the zombie pigmen, unless a baby comes by, but this was working really well, until I couldn't collect the XP for some reason. However, I farmed the entire day, got some nice gold, and went from level 0 to 18. So, it's not too shabby. I say this is probably my fastest way to get XP right now. In 1.7.10, new wood and leaf variants were added. Stained glass, biomes, all the fun stuff we've been wanting. Now we can build nice things. They also added in achievements, back when they were kind of weird and all spread out but I was focused on reaching level 30. I want to enchant my diamond sword, so I got back to work with the zombie piglin. 1.7 also changed how you sprint. It's finally with control instead of pressing W twice. A tiny change, but incredibly nice and important. After farming with the zombie piglins all day, I got to level 30 and headed home. Hopefully we'll get something other than efficiency on our sword. I rushed to the enchanting table in the morning and did it. I spent 30 levels on getting... The worst enchantment in the game. And there's no grindstone, so I can try this again. So I'll definitely be doing some villager trading to get enchantments that are good. So I went to the village and blocked all their doors so they stay safe inside until I'm ready for them. Kind of bummed out with the enchanting, but I want to finish the room. Just get it over with. I made a glass wall since I like the hubs wall so much. After that, I put some quartz on top, but ran out. Luckily, having enough nether bricks to finish the roof, though, and made a nice skylight. I put in some nether warts just to make it feel more dark and mystic in here. I also like how I made the room feel and then added glowstone to add in lights. Overall, a nice room. I went into the nether to get some more quartz, but I couldn't find where those trunks were. I kept running and searching, but those blocks were definitely hide-and-seek champions. I did get to spend more time with the gas, though. Helped it work on catching, but it still needs a lot of practice. So then, I was thinking, let me head the other direction, north, and see if it's there. But I wanted to have fun and play with the zombie piglins. One of them glitched and somehow hit me through the blocks behind me. 
killing me. Not sure how it reached me, but hey, at least we get some fun now. When I went back in, the zombie piglins were wearing all of my stuff, so I made a new set of armor and an iron sword to help me get my stuff back. But I didn't have food, and the zombie piglins obviously knew this, so I had to keep on fighting them with two hearts, and honestly, it made it a lot more fun. I was enjoying it this entire time. I found all my dropped items and some food near the end. Apparently, I went nuclear when I died and headed back home with my inventory back in my inventory. But my journey in the nether isn't done. I still need quartz. I went the other direction this time, north, and played catch with a gas, immediately finding quartz right after and got to work. A pretty peaceful time, nothing important happened. I was leveling up a ton, which is amazing, and I was collecting around two stacks of quartz. Then, as I was somewhat heading back to my portal, I found this new nether fortress. Surely would have chests inside, maybe, but I'm low on food, and I didn't notice it until now. Only two port shops left, and now I'm getting lost. But it should be fine, I'm on regular survival, not hardcore. If your hunger reaches zero, there's no way it'll kill me, right? And then I realize how bad my situation is. Oh no, oh I'm almost out of food. Oh, that's not good. Oh hey look, there's more uh, dark glowstone. Dude, I actually might have to fight zombie pigmen for rotten flesh. I was also zoning out and listening to music the entire time while uh, mining everything here, so I don't really know where I came from. Wait, no, didn't I recently do that? Wait, no. Oh, <gasps> I remember you. Yep, I found it, dude. I'm just too skilled. Like, it's just, it's too easy. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, Mojang needs to nerf me. It's just, it's too easy. Play around with death and the nether, you know? Like, there's no stopping me. This might kill me. Especially with hunger on top of this. Yeah, this is going to kill me. Or not. I'm just going to live with half of a heart. Oh, no. Cool. I thought it only kills you in uh, hardcore. Yeah, apparently you can starve to death in regular survival too. That genuinely shocked me. We arrived at the Bountiful update and now we're getting into the super fun versions. This one basically just adds the guardians and minor ocean stuff, which now I won't be doing. Instead, I'll be in the void watching time fly by and communicating with a god. Oh, hey, my house. Never mind. Instead, we're going to go to the nether portal that got broken from this update for some reason and then go back into the nether once relighting it. Luckily, nothing broke in the nether. I traveled back and got my stuff, which was luckily really close to the portal. However, I lost 25 levels from that little hiccup. A shame, and a scaredy cat loser would have headed straight back home after getting their stuff. But I'm not like that. I like to play with danger, so I went back and tried to find some zombie piglin, which were hidden really well. I guess they were scared of my wrath and didn't want to help me level up. But I did find them and got to work, going all the way back to level 16, which isn't the best, but I don't want to waste too many days farming for experience. I went back to the enchanting room and finish off the quartz section, finally completing the enchanting room. I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do today. I still need diamonds and my luck in the mines are awful, but maybe if I start a new tunnel now and head in a different direction, I would find some diamonds then? Only one way to find out. Well, no, still nothing. I traveled a decent amount north today and found some caves, but overall, I never found any diamonds. I mined everything else, but I don't think I'm ever going to get lucky enough to find some diamonds. I think I'll have to hold out till the end cities or with villagers, which both will take a long time. I tended to the chores this morning since I haven't for a while, and then I brought over some of the animals I was missing for the barn. Pigs need carrots from now on. Uh, apparently, they're too good for wheat. And the only way I know how to get carrots is villages. So I began to run around trying to find one. But then... I I was next to a desert and saw a temple. And temples can hold diamonds, just not this temple. The loot inside is actually terrible. Like, almost as terrible as the size of these rabbits. Whoa, have rabbits always been this huge? Dang, bro. What have you been eating, other rabbits? This is a baby and this is this, this is bigger than the adults and the newer versions, dang, bro. Yeah, I thought you'd enjoy seeing these behemoths. Never remembered them being so huge. But anyways, if I can find some diamonds in the temples, I could make some diamonds. In armor. I saw some Endermen in the desert and remembered that I'll need some pearls to get to the stronghold and kill the Ender Dragon. I spent the night searching and fighting Endermen. I think I said hi to about nine of them and only got two Ender Pearls from them. This world hates me. It's very rare to get loot, but now the knights will serve a purpose for me. I'm in a building mood today, however, and went around to gather a lot of logs for the barn. With some of those logs, I got organized and moved some stuff around the hub. After that, I got prepared and I want to put part of the barn supporting the enchanting room. Make it a little bit more realistic. And I want to try out some funky building designs with this too. So far, this entire base is just a design test for me. 
This is all stuff I would never do back in the day, so it's kind of fun for me. See how intricate I can make each part of the build. Like this doorway, which is looking really nice so far. I finished the doorway in the morning and I wanted to see what the bottom layer would look like with cobblestone stairs instead, just for a different color balance and to make the entrance stand out more. After liking that decision, I wanted to be a little random and quirky. I use stairs for windows, just some tiny little pockets, and I don't know if I like or hate them. They're nice, but I'm not sure. I'm leaving them there, however, and added a log border around the stairs, just to finish off the window look. With a no escape now, I release the cows and letting them roam free in here. Now to come up with something for the walls, and to finish off the build. But first, it's time to update to version 1.9.4. The combat update, but what's more important is the end overhaul. Now, I really want to reach the end. Since endermen seem to only come during the night, I just worked on the barn. I did a gravel layer because why not, and I think it can look like concrete or molding, holding up the structure more. I built the walls up till I reached the enchanting room, and now the building is resting on the barn, so the HOA creepers should be okay and not bother us anymore. And then night came. I began with saying hi to the most deadly enemies out here, and then waited for the endermen, which they were too shy to show up. Until they weren't. I was fighting the first one when Zeus decided to slow me down and make it rain, making tonight completely useless. Well, hello. I have been wanting a horse, and I think I just found it. Uh, I'm hoping that this fight goes well, because there shouldn't there be a lightning strike? Okay, yep, I was waiting for that. Hello, chill, chill. Yeah, 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 fight each other. Okay, just don't kill the horses, please. Nice, one horse saved. Oh my god, please come here. Uh, stop, 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 stop it. I don't want to kill the No, stay there, good boy. Stop, please. Stop embarrassing me. You're making me look really bad. Stop. Dude, th this, this is not an AI. This is 100% a real player that I'm going against. Please wait, please stop. Oh my god. Oh. Now, I don't have any slime and I don't have any leads. I do have two saddles. Isn't skeleton horses kind of tamed differently from alive horses? Now, do I... Oh, you're already tamed? Okay, sweet. I don't ever remember leads looking like this, like being 3D. And so for all the artists out there that watch my videos, if you'd like to draw me some fan art with me and like the skeleton horses, oh my God, the health. Tweet it out at me on Twitter. I'll retweet you and uh, like to check out some art. So after that whole fun adventure was finished, I needed stuff to do. And there was a desert right next to me to do. Wait, that sounded weird. So I found this desert temple that was from an earlier update, meaning the loot inside is terrible. Wait, no, never mind. I finally got some diamonds. Desert temples are actually more efficient at getting diamonds than mining. And now that it's finally nighttime, I need to go and hunt down some endermen. And I'm really hoping that it doesn't rain. What's up, buddy? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to run up here because I'm too lazy to come down there. Thank you so much. God, why does this game have to be a horror game? Oh man, you're freaky. And the rest of the night didn't go any better. I was getting a ton of other mobs, took some zombie kids to Disney World, and at the end of the night, I didn't get any ender pearls at all. This is gonna be a long journey. I explored the desert for some more temples and came upon this newer one. The only good items inside was a single diamond and this infinity enchanting book. I've never really used infinity before. I've always favored mending over it, but maybe this will come in handy for the dragon fight. I then came upon this single chunk error. I believe the snow part was from the older terrain would make sense since it's snowy. And back then the only biome was the frozen wastelands. I finished off the day with one last desert temple and got a diamond and a golden apple out of it. Not too shabby. This is a lot better than my mining experience. Night finally fell, hopefully not too hard. And I wasn't finding any intermittent until the end of the night. Very, very luckily, both of them dropped ender pearls, finally making some progress at getting to the stronghold. I spent the morning saying hi to cows, my stake inventory was getting low and Costco was closed. Once I had a decent amount, I tended to the farm and did my weekly chores that should be daily. Then all that was left was to wait for nighttime. Oh hey, it's nighttime. At first it was just the usual baddie mobs and then finally the six foot tall men came out. The first one was a butthead and didn't drop anything. The second one was kind and then I finished off the night with yet again two winter pearls. At this rate, we'll only have to do this three more nights. But then I had another mega brain blast. Why wait till I have around 10 eyes of ender? Why not go to the stronghold now and then I can see how many ender pearls I need, especially since these are so rare and take so long. So I don't want to collect more than the amount I need. So I headed out and tried to find the stronghold today. The eyes were acting strange, however, and started to send me in a circle. Night was falling and I just wanted to wait out the night and update. Maybe 1.10 will make Enderman nicer. So 1.10 is the frost burn update, arguably one of the worst. Basically it just adds in some ice biome stuff and that's it. So no, it doesn't make the Enderman better. After a little bit of searching, I found the spot to dig down. 
digging straight to the stone blocks and getting a nice welcome from a silverfish. I was welcomed with more baddies after leaving my staircase, and then things became worrisome. So I wasn't exactly prepared with torches for this place, and after a couple of minutes of searching, I was starting to worry. Not because there's three scary children right below me, but because I have this bad luck charm where the first stronghold I enter doesn't have a portal room. Until I said hi to this kid, and on the opposite side of the wall, the portal room. And then my luck came back. I have five eyes of ender left, and now I need six more for the portal. At least I know that now and I know where to go. I built a staircase back to the top and funny enough, it came up to the other entrance I made. I was so close to just digging straight to the portal room. An enderman welcomed me this morning and surprisingly dropped an ender pearl for me. So now I only need five more. I was heading home until I realized I was heading the wrong direction. So I went back to the portal room and then headed north to get home. I was going to stay up during the night to find some endermen, but you know, rain doesn't mix with endermen too well. However, my bow mixed with an enchanting table works out super well. I managed to get a power two, unbreaking two, and punch one bow, and then I slapped infinity on it. Not the strongest bow in the world, but man am I happy to have it. I had some time to kill, so I went into the mines. Surely, this time, I would get some diamonds. There's literally no way it's not possible. So I didn't find any diamonds, and I broke my pick in the process. Y yeah, I made another pick, and just so I wouldn't be traumatized, I gave it unbreaking one. Just so it'll last the whole movie. Night was here, and I fought about five endermen tonight. Getting myself a whole whopping zero ender pearl. No idea what it is with this world, but this is the unluckiest seed I've ever had. After my morning heart attack, I just thought, maybe endermen are more likely to drop ender pearls during the day. I know that's not true, but hey, I'm getting a little desperate here, and I don't want to spend the entire movie trying to get ender pearls. So I ran around the base, but was never lucky enough to find one enderman. I did, however, find this dungeon. Don't know why these are so common. And the chests were pretty, eh, nothing good. I headed back home and night was here. My first enderman went well, and it showed how the night was going to go. I I got an inner pearl from the first enderman and ended off the night with three total. Just need two more inner pearls now. Since it's been a little bit and I do plan on building more soon, today was chore day. I chopped down all the trees, replanted those, then went into the mines to see if I could find some diamonds if I headed north, and well, the mine shaft started like this, and after mining this amount, no, still no diamonds. But I'm determined. I'll find some soon. When I came back out, it was nighttime. I had a fun pool party with the first enderman and I was keeping my hopes up. I usually get two inner pearls per night, so she Surely, this would be the final night that I have to farm for these. Nope, didn't even get one inner pearl. But at least we get one update now. Now for the exploration update 1.11.2. Adding in a lot of things to make the world more enjoyable, and also totems of undying. I know I'm not in hardcore, but it feels weird not having a totem in my hand. Maybe we'll do a raid soon so I can get one just for fun. I went through the chest and gathered items for a farm. My little farm to the side of my house won't do it anymore for the cows. And also because I want to make my base bigger. I made the staircase out of easy items this time, and then began building a circle out of nether bricks. I like the color contrast between dirt and this block, makes it feel more rustic to me in a sense. And then of course, once I finished the dirt part, I noticed the circle was lopsided. I tried to fix it, but for some reason, one corner couldn't be fixed. The numbering was always off. But I won't tell you which corner, so you can't roast me in the comments. Then, like a slinky going down the stairs, night fell. I did the pawn strat again and got a pearl immediately. Then, didn't see another one till the end of the night when I was about to go to sleep. Finally getting the last pearl that I need. I crafted them into Eyes of Vendor, and now, we can go to the end. I got prepared for the dragon fight and tried to think of everything I'll need. I also used my levels to enchant my iron gear, since if I die, I'll lose it all. So, why not? Basically, getting protection, unbreaking, and feather falling on my armor. The feather Falling was the greatest one since I feel like I'll need it. I then made the track to the stronghold, lit up the place, and when I got to the portal, I placed in the remaining eyes and well, there was no sound. It was kind of a letdown. I placed a lot of items in the chest in case I die, and then went to sleep. I went to the portal and did my lucky 360 jump into it, and, well, this is the safest end I've ever witnessed. I had a two block gap from the obsidian platform, and still didn't see the dragon when I went up. I even went to the first crystal and broke it. And then finally, the dragon realized that I was here, trying to stop me from breaking the crystals, but those didn't stay up for long. Just like how I was staying up high, and the dragon came to kiss me. It got weirdly intimate, and she left me with two hearts, weirded me out even more more because penguins only have one heart. Not sure how I got the extra one. I never knew this, but the dragon can delete water. Or she was super thirsty, and now maybe she'll not want to kill me. Who knows? Before I could find out, I said hi to her over the portal and freed the end, collecting the experience and reaching level 66. Yeah, funny enough, uh, if you guys can leave a comment to help me with this, I don't know how to get the ender dragon egg in my hardcore world because I kind of hit it and it disappeared because I think I tried mining it with a uh, 
a silk touch pickaxe and um yeah it's kind of gone and i have no idea how to find it i was preparing to head back into the end but i was thinking of shulkers i think this is everything i would need i'm kind of tempted to go back up get some wood and make some chests there is one right there huh Yep. And for the first time ever, I'm insanely happy my bow has infinity on it. The spawner in there was working overtime. Never got a break from these buttheads at all. So I rushed inside and broke the spawner, then ran away. After clearing everyone out, I looted the chest and it was pretty rare. But now I have a chest for when I come across shulkers. I went back into the end and then bridged my way over to the portal. Thinking to myself, wouldn't it be really cool if this portal spawned me right on an end ship? Sadly, no end ship in sight and I just got to running. Turning up my render distance to max since it's just islands everywhere. I made it close enough to the islands and teleported over. I went to the other side of the island and in the distance, just barely in my view, I saw an arm of an end city. I gathered more blocks and headed over there. Now for the- wait, there's a portal up there. When I first entered the place and I said, man, that would be really cool to just have a portal on a boat, I actually could have had it in this seed. I'm gonna go get the elytra first and then I'm gonna take on the tower just in case, you know, if I elevate then I could just glide back down. No, no, no. Oh my God, there's actually one up here. You, I need that elytra. Don't you dare shoot me. Yes, yes. Oh, we have an elytra. We actually have diamonds. It's not the worst. And let's get us a dragon head. Nice. And then let's go kill this guy. We really don't need him. Oh, hi. Oh, thank you. You wanted to, you know, come into here in case you drop any shulker shells. Do they not drop shulker shells? Oh, uh, we could finally fly around again. Hello there, boys. Don't mind me. I am just coming in here for uh, my valuables. Oh, whoops. I thought you were shulker. Oh, nope. He's over there. Please don't. No, 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 no. We don't need, we don't need to start. We don't need to start this. Okay. You guys are making, you guys are being ridiculous right now. You're being very ridiculous. Yes. Mending as well. Sadly, I don't have any silk touch, so I can't break this. I actually don't need anything down there, so you know what? No, no, no. I'm just gonna fly out if you're going to the other building and get the loot over there. Can you guys just not for one second? What's up, boys? Oh, there's no loot in here? And you guys are stingy. Dang it. No. I'm not done with you. Oh, wait, that wasn't one. Wait, what? I thought that was a. Oh my gosh, there's a shulker shell. Okay, so they're just incredibly low drops. The elytra is very janky in this version. I wonder if they only drop their shells if I shoot them. Because so far, I think that's the only way they've dropped it. Yep. Okay. So I have to kill shulkers with a bow and arrow for whatever reason. I don't know how that never landed. So was there really only one chest in this entire place? Did I check in there? I didn't. Yo, hit me. Okay. No, don't hit me anymore. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no more. No more hitting. No more hitting. Eh. Won't lie. Um, kind of lame loot. I was genuinely uh, expecting uh, some more diamond armor. I mean, we could, I mean, we could fly now. We actually could go to some other uh, in cities. We'll just do a quick little fly around. Well, I flew around. I, I tried. I looked. And can I make it in? Oh, that was a very successful run. I'm surprised how quickly I found that city with a portal right next to it. Did that open up another portal around here? So no. So if I wanted to, which I definitely don't, and I'm 100% not going to do it, is uh, if I killed the dragon like 20 times, one of them would open up straight onto the end city. We did pretty good. I can at least make one shulker box. So that's pretty awesome. But yeah, let's just go to sleep and time for an update, which is kind of a pointless one, but it is nice for building. The world of color update, practically just concrete was added oh hey look i got the achievement named after me oh god wait i don't think i can actually carry all of this well it's a good thing i can make a shulker because uh we got to do that now oh no we really have to make a um an ender chest Wow, they haven't changed the design ever since like 1.11 or 1.12. Finally, we're all done with the end. Oh, I could actually fly around and try and find a lot of desert temples. I can see if I can get diamonds that way. I, oh God, I, I need to enchant this really fast. It's already almost broken. After arriving home, I put everything from the end away, except for the dragon egg. That's in the inner chest, I believe. And now I really need to make one. Um, Let's go 
and enchant everything. So first off, we have to do the elytra. That's my most important one. Cool. We can enchant the elytra in this version. So that's probably going to break soon. So good news and bad news. I really want to do a raid. Like I really want to do one, get a totem of undying. However, there are no raids, but there are totems of undying in this. How do you, how do you get totems of undying? Oh okay, yeah. Looking it up, I'm 100% not getting a totem of undying until we get into the raids. <laughs> I have to go find a woodland mansion for it to work. And with those plans for I just tended to the farms, got the cows to be freaky deaky like, and then slept. The updates that I'm looking for are right around the corner, so why not build until they get here? I managed to pull off the legendary reverse MLG water bucket landing and got to work on the farm. Probably something I should have done a while ago. The far edges were too far from the water spot to stay hydrated, so I think I'll put pumpkins there. I added leaves to the edges because you know why, and then added all the plants and used bone meal. I don't plan on harvesting the pumpkins, mainly just using them as decoration blocks. I was thinking, should should I add support pillars below the farm so it isn't floating? It might be bad to have the HOA creepers come by again and try to give me a ticket. But I can't read so those things don't affect me. I want to make an inner chest now so I can get those items out of it. And instead of being a nerd and mining more obsidian, I thought why not go into the nether, go down to 4 FPS, have a zombie almost knock me into lava, say hi to the zombie, and then mine the corners of the portal. It's just so much more logical that way. But now I need some family jewels, enderman family jewels to be exact, and I know they can spawn in the nether in the newer versions, so I checked around the spawn area a little bit and noticed that there was nothing in the nether. Nothing was spawning in. So instead, I flew to the end because I have a big brain and then farmed the Enderman here. It'd be a lot faster this way instead of waiting till nighttime and farming for eight days straight. I crafted the Eye of Ender next, made the chest, and opened it up. Wait, where's my dragon egg? Oh, I uh, had it this entire time. I knew that. I was just checking to see if you all did too. Day 69. Stop laughing. I want to get some concrete for the last room. The villager trading hall since we're getting close to the ocean update and also because i want to try out a different color combo than what i normally do i want to make an ocean themed room for the villagers collecting the sand for the concrete was the easy part it's just the gravel collecting part is difficult for once the block is rare for me almost as rare as blue flowers since i'm in older chunks i don't feel like traveling far for the flowers so instead i'll just use lapis which doesn't turn into a die it just works like one a little confusing next i did the old water mining trick and once the funny sounds were all done i was like half way done with making it into concrete. I finished the rest of it in the morning. Also, do you like these kind of speedy montages too? Just trying stuff out. The next block I'll need for the building is obviously sand. I need a light color for the ground, and luckily I can make sand into sandstone. So I went back over to the desert next to the villagers, and the hill right here first looked like this, and then turned into this when I was done. I doubt I'll need to mine more, but since I just said that, obviously I'll need to mine more now. I jinx myself a lot. But before getting into building it, I'm going to wait till tomorrow for the ocean update. At one point 13 update aquatic is arguably the start of the best times on minecraft i'd argue that this was the beginning of all the good content in minecraft so it's actually a really good thing that i waited to start building this room because they finally added in stripped logs however i'm not going to go back and like touch up any of the other buildings just because you know i built them during those updates so i want them to resemble it in a sense and i i, I just i don't know like of course i can go back and like make this all look a lot better but i just really don't want to one i'm too lazy and um yeah so heading north there's an ocean area near my house. I didn't go too far so the new chunks could spawn in at this moment, and there was my nightmare. A guardian temple. Before you even wonder or leave a comment, no, I'm not going to take that on. I'll need god armor for that. But to the north of the temple, there was a sunken ship. I got another diamond, therefore proving my mineshaft is useless, and then took the treasure map. I went to the spot and did that one trick where you line up with the X and then have one pixel of white showing, and I began digging, and then dug some more, and more. And after a little bit, I figured there's no no way there's a chest here. So I left it and tried to spot another ship, but had no luck. I went back home and now I'm starting to get worried about my elytra. It's almost broken. So we're back to running everywhere until I make a mending villager. I went back to the spot I left at from last night and was heading to the sunken ship in the distance when this little gremlin came running at me telling me to go help his brother with some javelin throw. A weird request, but I went to their home and borrowed some items from their chest. Their brother had some good throwing strength, but his aim was terrible and he kept trying to hit me. I left with about four javelins javelins on my back and went to the sunken ship. Only good chest was the very map one and I went to its location. Flippers crossed and I began to dig. This time actually finding a chest and inside was three diamonds and a lot of iron. Now we're making progress. Now that I have a promising way of getting diamond armor and just more diamonds in general, I went to the sunken ship in the air. Not sure how it's sunken at that point and looted the place up. Getting another map and heading over there. I got two more diamonds from the chest. It's safe to say I want to keep doing this. You know, taking wealth from the rich and giving it to myself. 
like Robin Hood. But night was here and my inventory was full. I got organized in the morning and since it's been a little bit, here's how the farm is looking. The pumpkins are coming along well and I'm liking the color they're bringing. I won't harvest them, I'll just leave them here. Since I have diamonds for once, I crafted some Balenciaga diamond sneakers and went to enchant them. Surely I would have some luck here and get some good enchantments, right? No. And I don't want to swap out my iron boots for them, so I tried to make a grindstone to fix this. But when I went to craft the stone slabs, I uh, got smooth stone slabs and I can't figure out how to make stone slabs. So now I'm stuck with these useless Balenciagas until an update comes in that lets me craft a grindstone. So we might as well get into building. I need to make that villager trading room pronto. I crafted the stairs out of sandstone. Kind of wish concrete could be made into stairs. And then I used some birch logs for once. I think this is the second time I've ever used these. Children, avert your eyes. I stripped the logs and they make for a really nice beach look. I then made the border of the room out of sandstone. The floor will be made out of stripped birch logs. I first tested out a single strip of birch wood to make sure it'll look nice. And I feel like it gives a realistic sandy ground to the building. So with that decided, I ran around to all the birch trees near me and chopped them down. Side note, I've also realized from recording these special 100 day movies that birch logs are starting to become nice to me. But I'll never admit that and I'm always going to say they're the worst. Anyways, I began to lay out the logs across the floor. Looking at it in this amount, I kind of want to use this in a snowy build. Once the ground was all complete, I stripped the logs. You dirty mind. I finished stripping the floor and I think this was the best block choice. Next, I put sand on all the walls to make a nice buffer between the blue concrete and the floor. Also, you can look at it like a nice wall of art. The sand on the bottom is you walking to the water, and then the blue concrete is the ocean. So where you're standing is the shore. That makes no sense, huh? See what I mean now? It can kind of resemble you on the beach shores. And then I kind of messed it up with the ceiling, but there wasn't really much I could do, unless I wanted to spend a lot of days gathering stuff. But I think the sand, sandstone, and the sandstone stairs can resemble the sky a bit, maybe? And now we're onto the even bigger Golden Age updates. Except this one is about villagers and they suck, but they suck a little less now. I went over to the village to see if the boogers were still there, and they are. But now, how do I get them over? I could make a tunnel and use a water bucket to push them, but that's annoying. I could make a railroad, but I don't have that much iron. And then I thought, well, what if I make a lectern? I know they generally like to stay around the block of their profession, so I tried it out. And it was actually working. The villager follows the block and will constantly walk up to it. If it gets too far though, it'll return to the village, so you can't move it too far ahead of them. I then did this process until I got them into the villager room and then trapped them, immediately getting to work on trying to get a nice enchanting book. But it got stuck on this impaling book. It was too late in the day to refresh its trades, so I just made the max amount of lecterns I could to end off the day. The villager was being a turd still and wouldn't change trades, so I got to work on the next villager. It was being nice in the beginning until we got to my base. Maybe the other villager was screaming and trying to tell him to run, but it took a bit to get him inside. Then the other villager was finally refreshing its trades, so I got back to trying to get some good enchantments. But the other villager saw what was going on, and it was a back and forth fight on who was getting the lectern. After a couple of minutes, I finally got sharpness 5. I can now put my sword into a grindstone and then put a good enchantment on it. It was getting late now when the other villagers stopped refreshing its trade, so I just tended to my farm for the cows and then went to sleep. Same story with turd in the morning, so I just went to the cows and got them to freaky deaky. Really quickly, am I the only one that's shocked that this was the original recipe for a composter? This thing used to be really expensive and it makes no sense. I cleared out a good chunk of my farming chest and more bone meal is always nice. Now, back to business. I went back to trying to get a nice enchantment trade, but the entire day was a waste. This thing just doesn't want to be nice to me, and it was getting late. Late, so the villager didn't want to work with me anymore, and I had to cut my losses there. I went back to the village to get the next villager ready, but I guess no one was wanting to work tonight. I got the villager out of the house and turned into a librarian, but it stopped there. They didn't want to follow me anymore, so we'll have to continue this tomorrow. To end off the day, I extended the sugarcane farm to get books faster, also for an emerald trade. I can make these into paper and then trade it for emeralds. I do a stick farm, but I can't find any bamboo. I went back to the village in the morning, and well, our buddy left. I checked every single house, Check the immediate areas, check the riverbed next to the village, nothing. I slept right when it turned nighttime, so there's no way some mob killed him. Oh hey, there he is, coming out of the first building somehow, that I checked. Anyways, I began to bring him towards the base and he was the first villager to not be a pain. He just happily waddled over to the room and now we got three trapped in here. I got back to refreshing trades and after like five minutes, the first villager gave me mending for insanely cheap and I quickly sold some paper to buy it. Finally, we're making progress. I tried to refresh the third villager, but 
but they just stopped after the fifth time. Then I noticed the time. But hey, we got mending. So I added it to the elytra. Now I won't have to worry about flying around the world. I then used the grindstone on my sword to get rid of the knockback. I then enchanted it and got some insanely nice enchants. But uh, I already have a sharpness five book from the villagers. So um, yeah, at least I got sweeping edge on it. I gave the third villager a pep talk this morning. Tried to entice them to actually give me some good trades since they seemed kind. They did come over here the easiest compared to the other villagers, but even if it does give me unbreaking, which is the last book I want right now, I can't get it. I'm low on emeralds and I don't have a good emerald trading farm. I need bamboo for it. I'll have to explore soon, but I checked around the immediate areas, see if I could find some bamboo. But I just got some leather for more books and some sugarcane for paper. With more paper crafted, I just got back to refreshing trades for the villager, hoping I can get some kind of unbreaking and hopefully the villager will take a paper trade so I can lock it in. But it was getting late again and I couldn't refresh their trades anymore. I got back to breeding the cows, since if I get enough items with mending on them, I can come say hi to the cows for some quick experience. I then upgraded the lighting in the villager trading room. Maybe with nicer lights, the last villager will be kinder to me and give me unbreaking? Day 81 and we're nearing the final updates. 1.15 is the Buzzy Bees update and a cool fact, this is the update where I made my first 100 days movie. I've come a long way. Just like how I'm coming a long way with this villager. I think the fancy lights actually helped out. Uh, about a minute into refreshing trades and I got unbreaking 3, which is amazing, but that price for just one book is insane. Of course, I could turn them into a zombie and cure them and you know, blah blah blah, but that'd be too easy and I'm too lazy. I could try and keep doing paper trades, but regardless if I make the farm bigger, it'll be too late. So I went and captured another villager. I told them they become a master fetching artisan and they actually believed me. Fool. But then I became the fool because this entire time they were pretending into wanting to be a fetcher. This entire time they were a nerd and wanting to become a librarian. The old fetching front librarian hidden tactic, oldest trick in the book, but I just captured them and forced them to buy my sticks, which I did use my wood to make, but this won't do. It's too much work for me to get sticks this way. I begin to fly around the jungles around my base since my elytra has mending now and I didn't find any bamboo. All of these jungles were made in old chunks. I did get some sugarcane while out here and while returning home, my elytra was almost broken. Man, the mobs were looking mighty fine for some walking XP. It's not an enderman farm, but you can repair things quite quickly this way. Repairing my elytra up to like 80% health. I quickly got organized in the morning and then headed out. So you can get bamboo from jungles obviously, however, in the past I've gotten really lucky and obtained bamboo from sunken ships. Also, they give nice ores, but not this first ship. This one was kind of poo-poo. But surely the buried treasure won't be, is what I initially thought until four minutes of digging later and I never found the chest. But there's no way this second sunken ship would lead me to a bad chest, right? I made my way to the buried site during the night and almost immediately, I found the chest. I don't know why, but every first sunken ship I explore, the map leads to nothing. I guess first the worst, second the best, and third should give me an enchanted netherite armor and tools. That's that's how the saying goes, trust me. I flew back home to sleep, but apparently I was hosting a party that I didn't know I wanted. No! Wait! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 is this a zombie apoc- Oh my god, why are there so many zombies? Oh, don't go for my villages, please. Okay, good, they're still alive. Oh my gosh! Why are there so many of you? Is this what, like, the zombie horde is? Because I read that there was an update like that. Hey, I don't mind this, you know? I'll take all the free XP I can get, hey, thank you. Don't 360 me. Once the zombie siege, which I've never experienced before, was done, I took the time to light up the roof. It completely skipped my mind that they would spawn up here. I went over to our old chap, the Unbreaking Man, and did some capitalism. I finally got the Unbreaking 3 book and then applied it to my elytra. When penguins can fly, now we're in business. Well, we have been in business for a while. I want to do an adventure now. I still need bamboo, but I also want to do a raid. I think it would be fun and I want to do some big battle. While flying over some new chunks, I came upon one of their towers. I landed at the top, borrowed some of their loot, and then went down. There were some at the front door and then my luck began to come back. I found a fly carrier and then got the debuff. Of course, I could try and do a level 5 raid, but I don't have the greatest gear and I would rather not chance it. So I flew out and headed north uh, until I came upon this village, which it had an iron golem so this should go even smoother, right? Just to make sure I don't lose the raid, I first worked on trapping a villager in a room, the oldest trick in the book, and then got to work. Like normal, nothing really happened 
happened. The first wave was easy and I got through that like normal. I was shopping for some of the village items and apparently this bell is a super hot item. Immediately getting rushed and having flashbacks to Black Friday sales. I was getting teamed up on by two axe shoppers but luckily a Karen saw me and threatened to get a manager on them. The waves went by normally and I was starting to worry that I want to get a totem of undying. Maybe they were all sold out. Then I saw a worker carrying one and I was able to snipe it before any other shopper could. Again, I know it's pointless in me having this in regular survival, but it feels weird not having one in my hand. And then things began to go bad. You see, I didn't have that much food when I began this raid, and you need food to heal. I actually ate everything, and now I have to beat this raid without getting touched. I was once again incredibly thankful for my bow having infinity on it. I just stayed in the distance and kept sniping everyone, never missing a shot and making the Navy SEAL sniper team jealous. The Iron Golem also died from a single Ravenger, and the flying rats were finally disappearing. Things were looking great and boom, I completed the raid without losing a single villager, never getting hit once, never missing a shot, and none of those were a lie. Just don't check me on it. Since I need food, I went around the village and borrowed meat from the animals. Once I had a decent amount of food, I headed north and collected logs from the buildings. We're all about recycling here. And then I was super duper smart and crafted a smoker, so I could cook everything faster and cheaper. Once the night fell, I was finally able to eat, healing up and getting back on track. Before heading out and exploring, I tended to the animals around the village, making sure they're all alright. After that, I tended to the houses to check out how structurally strong they are, just to help out the HOA creepers. While everything was cooking, I went around and started to shop again, taking anything deemed valuable and that I could use in the villager trading room. And then finally, all of the food was cooked, so I packed up and headed out again. Finding an ocean a few hundred blocks away from the village, right on a rock, not sure how the ship got here, but I opened up a trap door and I swear this isn't fake. I found three bamboo in the chest, quickly ending this journey, and I did get the treasure map though because surely this chest would actually be here, and to my surprise, it was. It was in the first spot I was digging in, and I got some diamonds out of this. With an amazing ending to this journey, I flew back home and waddled over to my bed. The 1.16 nether update redid the nether and made it a whole lot more fun, and I want to conquer it. I just need a few more enchants on my gear before doing so. And I first got to work on the bamboo farm. Today was a chore day and I needed to get on my emerald grind pronto. I made a decently large one with all the bone meal I had saved up and then sold the leftover sticks to the fetcher. Now that I have emeralds, I bought all the mending books I could and added one to my sword, grindstone my pick, and then enchanted it with fortune 2 and then added mending to it. But instead of traveling hundreds of blocks in dangerous terrain in the nether, why not relocate the portal in the overworld? Of course, I have to travel farther in the overworld to move anywhere in the nether, but it's just so much easier and faster. Also, I won't have to travel around mountains and weird pathways. So I found the swamp kind of near the village I just raided and built the portal. Once I lit that bad boy up, I went inside in, well, I think it's new chunks. It kind of looks new and I at least see quartz here. I also see the booger breath piglins here and we all introduce ourselves. I saw their boss and was tempted to quickly deal with them and then escape, but I'd rather stay undercover right now. I began flying around, my only objective in here is to find a bastion. I just want to take one on since they're kind of fun. I squeezed through this tiny opening and came into a cave. Since there's a ton of quartz here, it's a perfect time to slightly heal up my sword and gear. I find quartz to be the easiest way without some sort of farm. I traveled into the larger opening of the Crimson Forest and saw that there's a lot of pigs here. Which means, if I get gold, there's a whole lot of capitalism here. I managed to get around 11 ingots and as I was trying to craft it into ingots, the first customer didn't want to wait. We began trading and well, he never dropped me maxed out netherite armor and tools, so I had him say hello to my sword. I just want to show this area since it's really beautiful and I'm kind of jealous it isn't in my hardcore world. I found a destroyed nether portal in the middle of a lake and inside the chest, a golden apple and some golden nuggets. A delicious meal. I flew around some other biomes and without even realizing it, I flew right towards a bastion and then got some achievement that called me a hot tourist. I'm not blushing, I'm just sunburned. I was going to go check out the gold blocks, not steal them I swear, and the locals wanted some autographs. So I tried out this new autograph launching bow and dealt with the crowd. And then I went to go borrow the gold blocks. It's completely different. Before heading into the main room, I traveled up to the top since it was right here, and after making sure it was safe, the first chest had a music disc that I won't use, and in the second chest, eh, had gold at least, so I can trade for obsidian or something. After that, I headed up to the top, and well, I was kind of surprised to find a Navy SEAL sniper gas. It genuinely shocked me how it was able to spot me from all the way over there. After seeing how the security was in this place, I began to trade with this lonely piglin. If I can get enough obsidian from it, I won't have to travel 
a few thousand blocks back to my portal. And it was going all right. He wasn't really dropping obsidian. I then dropped him into this hole and then my soul left my body. A brute and a piglin came to the top, something that would two shot me most likely, and I was slowed down by the soul sand. My luck pulled through and somehow the brute fell into the hole with the other piglin. Barely escaped death there. I traded with the two trapped piglins and I was only able to get eight obsidian from them. So close. I set them free after that and headed down the other staircase that I'm assuming the brute came from. Luckily, downstairs, it was a double chest and not a double brute. Holding a ton of nice items and boom baby, a silk touch pickaxe. With all of this area looted, I went to the entrance and said hi to the butler. Walking inside next and the place was weirdly empty. Until I shot one of the piglins down below and then every piglin in the place ran to that location. Most falling down and into the lava. I guess they didn't know they had an upstairs. After saying hi to the locals, I looted the chest up here and now I can make a portal. I also got a nice diamond shovel. I'm wearing golden boots at this moment to keep the piglins off of me, but I never knew this. Apparently, putting down and opening a shulker box will make the piglins angry and attack you. This also genuinely shocked me. I started to cut corners and just hop down levels. I wasn't seeing any chests, so might as well rush to the center. There was a few piglins left, so we had a sniper duel. Oh, and I also got surprise rushed by this piglin, who jumped into the lava without me touching him at all, I swear. Before going to the center, though, I want to get rid of the magma cube spawner. There's just way too many, and I don't want to be surrounded in there. Once that was clear, I jumped into the center platform and began to baby proof it. I borrowed the items in the chest, which were insane. Got an ancient debris, iron blocks, diamond chest plate, and six diamonds. After making sure there wasn't any holes I could fall into, and I then broke the bridges leading here, I prepared for war in case piglins were to rush this place somehow, and then got to breaking every single gold block here. I gained about two and a half stacks of gold ingots, and then it was time to escape. I just towered up. I ran out of blocks and then did a super cool launch and flew out of the building. Was totally cool, I know. I double checked around the base to see if there was anything I missed and nope, I borrowed everything I could from this place. I was going to build another portal and leave, but I just wanted to fly and see if I could find anything else at all before leaving. That's when I found this huge nether fortress. And I mean huge, like your forehead kind of huge. I'm sorry. The place was super creepy and the further I explored, the more it put me on edge. Mainly because I kept on hearing wither skeletons walk and piglins clearing their throats, but I never saw them until I started to reach the top part of the fortress. I broke this blaze spawner and then came into this huge open area. So at first I was like, <laughs> you know, there's no way I'll get a wither skull, but hey, why not try for like three minutes? And if I don't get one, I'll go home. So I headed north and I kept on finding wither skeletons, but no skulls. So it was looking like I was about to head home. That's when I got to this back corner of the fortress, just about to leave and build the portal. And then there it was at the end of this hallway, just waiting for my gorgeous hands to pick it up. Wither skull. Now, I can't leave. I want to beat the wither. I'm already 33% there, so surely this won't take long, right? Um, yeah, that's when blazes nonstop kept spawning in. And let me tell you, originally, I never really put much thought into blazes. They were just fire enemies that you could easily avoid. Yeah, this place changed me. I'd put blazes near the top of my list of most hated mobs. Oh yeah, gas would also spawn in, just to add more spice to everything. About 10 minutes go by and I wasn't getting any more skulls. Oh well, I usually get one per day, but I fired this arrow and it hit and killed a blaze. Then out of the blue, the zombie piglins were all angy wangy and rushed me. I'm not even joking. I don't know why or how they're mad at me. I never hit them. So I just camped up here for the rest of the day, saying hi to them and signing autographs. But now we have to update to 1.17, the caves and cliffs part one. Just saying, not a good update ever since the aquatic one. They should have just had part one and two together. Right in the beginning, it was a good sign for how today was going to go. I randomly caught fire and didn't see any blaze that shot at me. I also became friends with the zombie piglins again. They were finally not angry at me anymore. But man, were the blazes filled with rage. I don't think they were bots. I'm 99% sure I was fighting real players. This place had to be a server. Even when I was on the opposite side of the fortress, they would snipe me. Made things actually interesting and fun in here. One sign I've noticed for wither skeletons, if their head doesn't turn red when you hit them, they'll drop you a skull. Except in this instance, where both of their heads turned red, yet one still dropped a skull. I just like spreading misinformation. But I swear that strat does work. Just like flying away from the fortress to get the butthead blaze rats to despawn so you can get wither skeletons to spawn in. These blazes, however, heard me and wanted to prove me wrong. All the mobs in this place have it out for me. Especially the zombie piglin. I've seen several of them wear black air force high tops. I was expecting to go another day in here, but very luckily near the end, these two beautiful specimens rushed me and I got my third wither skull. Now I can fight the wither. I immediately escaped the fortress, went up high to hopefully spawn somewhere on the surface, built the portal and went in. And luckily, since I built it so 
high up, I spawned deep underground in a cave. Makes sense. I dug my way up to the surface and flew. We're in a snowy biome, but I don't know where I am. But man, do I know where some good loot is. So I wouldn't mind lanterns for my base, and well, do these villagers really need all this light? Surely not. And who knows, maybe by me borrowing all their lanterns, it'll push them to advance towards electricity. Anywho, I have no idea where to go. I'm just heading north because I feel like my house should be this way. And since we're nearing the end of the movie, I can't stop at any place. Except for the sunken ship, because I have no self-control for loot and I just have to get the shiny, shiny stuff. Night was falling, don't worry, I don't think it hurt itself. And now I can't stop at any place. That's when I noticed that one weird mountain, and then a few hundred blocks ahead, the Pillager Tower. I actually managed to find my way home, and no, I I don't have my base coordinates written down. I almost never do that. And now to prepare for the wither. Obviously though, before that, I have to get organized. I went around changing all the torches to lanterns, but you can't place lanterns under leaves for some reason. Man, my life is just so hard. Just obstacle after obstacle. Please calm enough to pay respects. On a serious note though, I love how lanterns make this place look. I think it makes it look a lot fancier and warm. Like tradition, I'm going to use an iron golem to help me choose the wither fight. Even though if I die, it won't matter. But night was falling and I don't want baddies to come crash on my house while I'm fighting the wither. So I spent time with my good old besties and then said hi to my adult besties. Healed up my tools and now we're eating like kings for the last six days. The HOA zombie dropped by today, didn't even know that was a department, and he kept on rambling and saying, ow, fire, ouch, owie, ow, ooh, not good, hot burn, ow, water, please, ouch. I was stunned that it could speak and I didn't realize that I should have used my water bucket to save him. Anyways, I went down into the mines and went all the way to the back. Going to cheese the wither down here so it doesn't fly to my buildings and ruin my base. I spawned in the wither first and waited till it went boom boom to spawn in the iron golem so it wouldn't get hurt. That's when I realized my critical flaw. Iron golems can't spawn in if there's blocks touching the sides. I quickly went back to the three-way opening spot and spawned them there, instead of breaking the sides of the walls to spawn them in. I then used my water bucket to give him a fun time and then have him think that he's at wild rivers before going to his doom. Which the wither was being cheap and fighting him before iron dum dum over here realized that he's getting hurt. He rushed in heroically but died after only hitting the wither like three times. He'll be missed. Not really. I was using my bow when I didn't really notice my health and it was too late to heal. Thankfully, I had that totem of undying and it saved my life. I couldn't lower the wither's health anymore with bows and I clearly needed something to help me fight it. So I went back to my chest and got some healing potions, but not another totem of undying because I'm smart. I ran back to the booger butthead and lowered it back to its melee health point, going in for the kill and actually using the healing potions to save me. Told you I was smart. I was seeing the wither heading up next and was freaking out that it would try and go to my base. So I threw caution to the side and brushed in, hitting it left and right and finally saying hi to the wither. A weird thing next, there was cobblestone in this cave area and I never mined this far or ever put cobblestone here. Kind of weird. Almost as weird as checking out this new room the wither made and not finding any diamonds. That's right baby, still no luck down here. When I went back home, I couldn't make the beacon so I just waited for the glass to smelt. I crafted the beacon in the morning and then gathered all the ores that I had that I can make a beacon with. And well, it's not a lot. I also don't know where I want to build it. I don't exactly have a nice open spot for it, and if I were to put it in any building, it wouldn't fit. That's when I had the brilliant idea after trading with the villagers, to terraform the front lawn and then slap that bad boy right there. I have less than a total stack of blocks to build this beacon with, and well, with iron on the bottom and gold on the top, it looks like an omelet. And yes, I would love fan art of this bad boy, but I wanted to see if I can make it bigger. But I need a lot of gold for it. Of course, I can go mining and get disappointed again by my luck down there, or I could fly all the way to the swamp again and go to the nether and then find some gold ore in there. However, when I went to go do that, I could not find one block of gold ore in this entire dimension. Seriously, there was just no gold ores. And with a limited amount of days left, I didn't chance it. I just headed back home. The omelet beacon would have to stay. And now for the final update out right now. 1.18 Caves and Cliffs Part 2. Basically, just adds new max world height and depth and new cave systems. I believe it's been eight years since the world terrain generator was updated, so this one is huge. To finish off the movie, I want to finish building my base. The top part of this room that I made my bedroom and I kind of want to go all fancy on it. I started smelting some of my cobblestone and while that's going I'm collecting some sand for glass. I'm thinking of making a huge dome look for this. And fun spoiler, I collected a few hundred sand to make into glass which I never ended up using. While all that was smelting it was time and I went and chopped down the rainforest.
or at least I tried. I didn't realize how many trees there are and how annoying the monster trees are. I finished chopping down the good small trees and I think from now on, whenever I see a monster tree, I'll just use a flint and steel on it. I'll collect the easy to reach logs, but this way is so much faster and nicer than hunting and searching for all the logs in the tree. Kind of weird how Mojang hasn't added any faster way to chop down trees yet, but doing all of that passed enough time for the blocks to finish smelting in the furnaces. I turned the stone into stone bricks and we're ready to go. Firstly, I have no idea or plans for how this place will look. I'm just kind of going to wing some old wooden look with beams. I played the rest of the glowstone that I had around the platform and then filled in the open spots with stone bricks. After that, I planted where the support pillars would be going. But in the morning, I really wasn't feeling it. I didn't like how confusing it was looking. So I put this funky looking stone brick on the edge and put a log on top of it. It's a lot more expensive to do it this way, but I think it looks a lot nicer. Plus, I'll be able to have more pillars this way and that'll make the end product look a lot nicer. Now to begin on the actual pillars. I'm starting these edge pieces off slightly shorter than the rest and with and having it face towards the middle. These will cross the entire building and then these side pillars will all be facing the center pillar area as if they're resting on that and supporting it up, giving it all more realistic support. The site is practically done and it's kind of looking like an upside down ship, but trust me, it'll look good, I hope. Now to copy over the left side to the right and once that was completed, I'm actually really happy with this build. It's giving a nice Viking dining hall vibe and this is when I thought, nah, no glass. I'm gonna run to all the tops of the logs and place stone brick slabs on them just to cover them and I feel like it made it more realistic. It also made the beams on top look nicer. And at this moment, I swapped up how the beams would go. I planned for the ones on the edges to support up the middle ones, but now it's vice versa. With all the middle ones finished, I wasn't liking how jinky the top edges were looking. So I went around and added an upside down stairs to it, making the insides hollow, but the top nice and curvy. I finished up those curvy additions in the morning and now to add the middle support beam. Which I guess this way is more realistic, but I don't think that's correct. Either way, if these beams were on top or bottom of the cross beams, it would serve the same purpose. And finally, all of the pillars are done, right on time, but something's missing. It's looking good, but it needs something where the beams cross each other. And I think adding walls is the perfect touch. Makes it look like it's securing all the beams together. Plus, it's a perfect spot to add lanterns. Kind of sounded like a machine gun, and now this entire floor should be perfectly lit up. But speaking of lighting stuff up, I placed torches on top so we wouldn't have surprise zombies again. And here's how the finished base looks. It's not much. I was more focused on balancing everything instead of just building. But it's still a nice beginner base. I especially love this center building. However, I didn't want this glass to go to waste and I don't want to leave the villager room open. I wanted to make sure they were safe. And I would do a speedy montage here, but it would be terrible since I was moving my camera a ton. And speaking of camera, I just watched the sunset to end off the movie, like tradition. Also, don't forget, if you all give me to 100,000 Twitter followers before 2022 is over, I'll release the world download to my hardcore world.